blessed Thursday morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. And it's getting a little chilly out here now. The weather's starting to change. And to God be the glory the Lord gives, the Lord takes away. Whether it's heat, cold, rain. Uh, we know that uh, people are suffering right now from these uh, hurricanes. Helene, and uh, especially in the uh, western part of North Carolina. And now Milton is battering the middle part of Florida. We should keep these people in prayer. And we're reminded uh, the world will try to tell you about global warming, climate change, but we know that ultimately it is God who's in control of the rain and the winds. In the days of Noah, God sent the flood, the water to destroy the earth. So we need to be reminded that God is in control, but we should be praying for these people. And thank you all for coming in today as we go through the thought for the day which is through Numbers chapter 32. And as I was going through this chapter of the Bible, we're reminded in verse 11 that God's people would not go to the promised land because they had what was called half-hearted devotion or worship towards the Lord. And I want to speak about having this half-hearted devotion and worship to God. The Old Testament book of Hosea chapter 8 verse 7 we read that Ephraim was like a half-baked cake. Um, you ever have a pancake and you bake one side of it, but the other you leave the other side raw? Try eating something like that. That is what half-hearted worship towards God tastes like in the mouth of the Lord. In the New Testament, we read of the church of Laodicea, Revelation chapter 3, verse 16, where the church there was lukewarm. When you're sweating and you're hot on a hot day in the summer, you exercise, you work, you want cold water. On a cold morning or a cold night, you want warm, hot tea. But try having something lukewarm in between. It's not gonna satisfy the desire of your heart, and that's how it is when we worship the Lord half-heartedly. I hear a lot of people say they have one foot with the world and one foot with God. That troubles me when I hear that. Because we are told by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in John chapter 12, verse 31, that Satan is the prince of the air of this world. This world is not our home. And oftentimes God's people, as we read in Psalm 106, verse 35, would often mingle with the nations of this world and would come under God's judgment for that. God wants all of us. He doesn't want half-hearted worship. We need to be reminded of this today because I need to be reminded. I get up every day and I get up early. I have to focus and discipline myself on the Lord to prepare my heart to do these devotional videos, to get into the Word of God. The temptation is sometimes is to look at the sports scores or who's ahead in the polit political polls. And we need to be, there's nothing wrong with having a, a baseball team that you like but when it takes over your heart and mind when it's the first thing you think of in the morning and it's the thing you think of most of the time during the day that is the problem politics is not evil and i hear a lot of christians say that we shouldn't be involved in politics that's not true as i said yesterday god ordained the government and we should be involved in what's going on in our society we should be deeply concerned about the sanctity of life, the sanctity of marriage. I mean, look at the insanity that's going on in our day today. Ten years ago, we were thinking of legalizing gay marriage. Now, we're legalizing sex change operations for children. And sadly, the church is often the canary in the coal mine, the ostrich in the sand, whistling across the grave, just not involved. My friends, we should be involved with what's going on in our society, but it shouldn't absorb us. First and foremost is our relationship with God. The Old Testament prophet Jeremiah, he's often called the weeping prophet. And one of the reasons why he wept and grieved over the nation, as we read in Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 9, is that they forgot the commands of God. What is happening in our culture today with our people in America is that we're forgetting the commands of God. We're forgetting the fear of God. In Malachi, the last book of the Old Testament, chapter one, verses six to eight, you can read for yourself there, 
God is saying, where is the fear of the Lord? Where is the fear that is de I deserve, the respect and the honor? And people were bringing sacrifices that were damaged and beaten up and crippled. And instead of bringing the best of their litter, so to speak. This is what happened with Cain and Abel in Genesis chapter 4. Abel brought the best of his sacrifices to God. Cain brought the second best. He wanted to keep the best for himself. And out of anger and bitterness, envy and jealousy for his brother. We know the story. Cain slew his brother Abel. But my friends today, are we bringing our best to God? And let me tell you, if we do not worship God as his children, he will not punish us, but he will discipline us. And he could discipline us to the point of death. In Isaiah chapter 57, verses 1 to 2, we read there where God sometimes will take his children out of this world. Yes, it's to avoid the evil that's coming upon the land, or maybe God foresees things that people are going to do and uh, but there are times, it's called a mercy killing. There's a time where God gets so, his patience wears off with us that he will actually either cause some kind of calamity, or illness to come in our life, or he could even bring us to the point of death. You know, we think of calamities and things that happen that are bad as bad luck, freak of nature. Uh, no. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 7 Amos chapter 3 verse 6 you read those passages of scripture God is in control my friends God is not some grandfather figure up in heaven in a rocking chair looking down at his children wishing he could be more in control of what's going on a pitiful uh, authority in heaven no God is sovereign God's in control and God demands our fear and our respect there's times in my life when I don't have the fear of God that I should have, the reverence for God, and he will send something in my way like the thorn in the side. The Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 to 10, was brought up to the third heavens, saw things that nobody else had ever seen except for Christ himself and John, the images that John had on the island of Patmos in Revelation. But Paul... Instead of being given a crown when he was brought back down from heaven, was given a thorn in his flesh. He was buffered by Satan, this thorn. Probably bad eyesight, probably persecution for following Christ. And, G and he cried out to Jesus Christ three times to take this thorn out of his side. And Jesus said, no, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. And Paul would go on to say in verse 10 that he learned to rejoice in his infirmities. You see, we can rejoice when we're disciplined by God because we know that he loves us. Hebrews chapter 12 verses 5 to 11 reminds us that God disciplines his children. Just like an earthly parent should discipline their child when they do wrong. To keep them from going the wrong path and to bring them back to the right side, so to speak. The right path. My friends, today, let us learn on this day to worship God wholeheartedly let us not be like that half-baked pancake let us not be like that hot water on a cold day on, on, a, on a warm day that when we want the cold water let us not be one who sacrifices the animals like we read in Malachi chapter 1 verse 8 where it was crippled and damaged no let us give our best to God because God demands it God deserves it. You see, we were created in the image of God to worship him, not the things of this world. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for my brothers and sisters in Christ who will see this devotional video today. Lord, forgive me, as I say this from my heart, and anyone who's watching this video, for being too worried about the things of this world. May we be more heavenly minded. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you all.